Hey guys, those of you who are studying online, welcome back to Financial Management. And uh, today we'll try to talk about tax shield, after tax salvage value, a more detailed uh, example for a project that you are evaluating and we'll try to calculate NPV for that. So tax shield is provided by depreciation because it's not a real out of pocket cost. Your company doesn't pay depreciation in cash it's sort of an imaginary cost and uh, with this imaginary cost our earnings before tax is reduced which means we have to pay less tax that's how depreciation provides a tax shield let's have a look at how tax shield works using this simple example let's say we have a sales revenue of 20,000 cost of goods sold of 8,000 fixed costs of 2,000 overhead costs 500 and admin costs 800 and in the first example, let's say we don't have any depreciation. In that case, our EBIT can be calculated using this formula, 8,700. Let's say we have an interest expense of 1,700. EBT will be 7,000. Let's say our tax rate is 30%. In that case, our tax payment is 2,100. And we have a net income of 4,900. Now let's have a look at a similar example, but with some depreciation. That will show us how this tax shield works. Let's enter some number for depreciation here. Let's say 2000. As you can see, we have to pay less tax. We see that our depreciation increased from 0 to 2000, so an increase of 2000, and the tax payment decreased by 600. So our tax shield, the reduction in tax that we have to pay, is actually depreciation multiplied by the tax rate. Next, let's have a quick look at after-tax salvage value. If you are selling an asset at higher than the book value, because, of course, market value can be different from the book value, then you would have to pay tax on that difference between the higher market value and the lower book value. And, on the other hand, if you are selling an asset at the market price under the book value, you can get a tax refund on that difference. So even though you might be selling a car that belongs to your company for, let's say, $10,000, you might actually receive less or more than that due to the taxes or tax refunds. The formula to calculate this after-tax amount of money that you're going to receive is on the screen. And let's have a look at an example. Let's say, for example, you have a truck in your company which you initially bought for $120,000. Let's say you're using straight line depreciation and let's say the truck is supposed to last for 8 years according to the accounting rules. And um, in that case, your annual depreciation would be $180,000 divided by 8, uh, $15,000. But let's say before the lifetime of the truck expires, Say you are selling that truck after five years of use and let's say the market value that you are selling it for is uh, $59,000. We also need the book value to plug into this formula. So after five years of use, remember annual depreciation is $15,000. That will leave us with a book value of $45,000 for the truck. So we are actually selling the truck at a price higher than the book value, in which case will have to pay tax on the difference. And tax, of course, will depend on the tax rate. So let's say the tax rate for your company is 33%. So in this particular example, the amount of money that you will receive after tax is going to be calculated using this formula, which is 54,380. It's less than the seller gives you for the truck because you have to pay tax on that. Now let's change this example a little bit. Let's say you've used this truck quite a lot within the first five years. So the market value is now only $29,000. You're selling it for under book value. So you, you'll get some tax refund on that. Let's plug 29,000 here and 29,000 here. The value in brackets over here becomes negative and uh, there is a minus sign over here, negative and negative will give me a positive number, so I'm going to actually receive more money than, than the buyer gives me. And that will be 34,280. Next, let's have a look at the project evaluation again. We did something similar last week. 
This time we're just going to have some more details within the project so you practice a little more. So let's say the project is going to last for five years only. Let's say you have fixed costs per year of 25,000. Variable costs, cost of goods sold is $60 per unit. Say you have a tax rate of 34%, required data return for this project is, let's say, 15%. You buy the equipment for 800,000. It's depreciated uh, to zero in eight years in a straight line and salvage value. So you sell this equipment after the project finishes in five years for 200,000. You also need networking capital of, let's say, 20,000 dollars to start and once uh, your business is ongoing let's say networking capital requirement is going to be 20,000 of sales revenue and uh, the sales units and price let's say changes during the lifetime of the project as it's shown over here on this table so to calculate NPV I will need the cash flow from assets over here so as I said what can add cash within my assets well just running the business operating the business as normal then net capital spending is actually using cash to buy equipment so the negative of that would actually generate cash selling equipment would generate cash and an increase in networking capital is spending money to buy more short-term assets basically whereas if i sell those that will generate cash for me so a negative change in networking capital is sort of selling short-term assets that's how i view these three sources of cash flow and let's start with the long-term assets so my net capital spending at the beginning i need to buy that equipment for eight hundred thousand. i will use that machine and at the end of the project's life i'm going to sell it for two hundred thousand. but i might have to pay tax or get a tax refund depending on what's the book value so first let's calculate the book value after five years annual depreciation is going to be the initial cost by the eight years of the expected lifetime for this equipment that's one hundred thousand dollars per year so after five years half a million dollars should be depreciated that's accumulated depreciation over five years so the remaining book value is three hundred thousand whereas i'm only selling it for the market value of two hundred thousand so on the remaining hundred thousand i'll get a tax rebate the after tax salvage value two hundred thirty four thousand next let's move on to operating cash flow i need to look at the income statement for that our sales are of course going to be sales unit times the price i'm going to move it into year one and i've transposed that table for our sales and sales price so that i can copy the numbers across the years again sales revenue units times the price copy that for the five years cost of goods sold is 60 dollars per unit times the quantity fixed costs 25,000 depreciation per year is 100,000 we don't have any information on interest so we assume we don't pay any interest so EBIT and EBT would be the same tax payment is of course the tax rate times earnings before tax and net income is EBT minus the tax payment next I want to find the operating cash flow which is EBIT plus depreciation minus the tax payment there it is now we're ready to have a look at networking capital we need to start with 20,000 at the beginning and after that we need to have 20% of sales revenue as our networking capital so 20% of sales revenue this is the networking capital we're going to have during this project's lifetime and uh, we're going to look at the changes in networking capital at the very beginning of the project's life, we go from nothing to 20,000 in network capital. So that's, of course, a change of 20,000. And for the years after that, the change is going to be this increase or decrease compared to the previous year. And once the project finishes at the end of the last year, we get all this networking capital back into our pockets. So I just take a negative of this number. So for our cash flow from assets, I will need these highlighted numbers. Operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus the changes in networking capital. There we are. And NPV, 15% required rate of return. Cash flows from year 1 to 5. And manually add the initial costs. Negative NPV, 
So this project is going to lose money. 